Okay, everyone. So um, in this part two, we're going to start with what we what we ended up with in part one, which was this basic two surface boat like form, which um, uh, we can use as a base for what we'll talk about next, which is sectioning. So here's the uh, reference file. And there's a kind of a breakdown on the left here, which will give you an idea of where we're going. Uh, we're starting here from scratch. We already did the part A, which is uh, fairing and also, you know, the relationship between surfaces and curves. And we're going to walk through a way of sectioning it. Um, in this case, not using ISO curves uh, to describe surfaces, but really to section those surfaces in such a way that a lot will, will allow us to build, in the end, um, a series of rib sections that are perpendicular to both the outer profile and the lower keel simultaneously. So you can see how they kind of rotate in 3D space. Okay, so we're going to use uh, the curves that we have to draw perpendicular lines in both that axis and in this axis. And use that as a way to uh, set up um, planes in space that will model the surfaces that we'll use to cut our original surfaces down uh, and draw out these red sections that could be used to further add thickness, to further add detail to if we're building this out as a kind of a skeletal framework for the boat. Okay, so I'm going to pull that over and start here. Okay, and a, a good way to start this, I guess, is to turn off our surface layer. Let's not look at that right now. Um, and I'm going to change this to white. Maybe it's a little easier to see in the recording. Okay. I also, um, I put that at the origin, so I'm going to drop that up a little bit. You don't have to do that. I just want to make it clear in the recording. Okay, so the first step, uh, and here I'm going to make a new layer, and you may already have one called points from the first file. I'm going to remake that. I'll make that one red because that, uh, or maybe I'll make a cyan so you guys can see it. And the first thing I want to do is divide the keel line uh, a number of times to set my even spacing throughout, which will become my rib sections, or at least the locations for my rib sections. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to activate the points layer and select that curve and type in divide. Uh, my number of segments is going to be 10, and by default, yours will probably also say that. And then you can hit enter. And now what I've done is I've drawn a series of uh, points that are equidistant apart from one another along the length of that, that, that curve. All right. Okay. And now I've gone ahead and I've renamed my default layer construction. You, again, you probably already have that. And, and for the sake of clarity, I've got it on a cyan color. Um, and the next thing we got to do is draw perpendicular lines off of off of these points, perpendicular to the curve itself. Okay, so uh, I'm going to open up my four views for this. And because I only have one profile uh, uh, line, um, I can do this in 2D. So I'm going to type in line in the command line, and I'm going to click perpendicular up at the top to activate that as an option. And then I'm going to click on one of these points, uh, for starting with the first one, and then you can go up top and hit from first point, or you can just type in F in spacebar. Um, that will allow you to snap in a perpendicular direction from that specific point along that curve. And I'm just going to draw these out as arbitrary lengths. And I'm going to repeat the process. So line, perpendicular, select your next point, F spacebar, arbitrary lengths, and keep going making sure that each point or each line that you're drawing is perpendicular from the curve at the, at the div division point that you've drawn in the previous step, like so. And I'm going to just fire that up. Perpendicular point F up. And this will become more clear once we start changing curvature, that the lines are actually rotating uh, for you in space. You can start to see it happening. You can start to see it happening here. And there we go. Go 
go to my perspective view and have a look. And you can see now we've drawn our perpendicular curves. Um, now I'm going to set up a new layer. Um, well, I, I suppose I can use the surface layer for this. That's probably okay. You can also set up a new layer for construction surfaces because we're going to use these as kind of cutting planes. You can you can set up a cutting plane layer. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. Oh, looks like I got some some stuff that I got to fix. Hang on. Okay, that that is now updated. Uh, in fact, I, I will set up a new layer. So I'll go to new and cut the call this cutting plane. And activate that layer, and then we can just extrude these. We can just extrude those lines in two directions. So I'm going to type in extrude curve. That's the curve. The direction is going to be um, just in case you can set that to your y axis if your boat's modeled along the x, like mine. And then hit both sides up top, click that, and make sure you're drawing these out in a, to a distance that's at least wider than the width of your boat. And we can go ahead and carry that out for each one. In fact, I may even be able to select all of these. Let's try the two. Yep, looks like I can just select them all at once. Run the command and extrude them out like so. So now our cutting planes are drawn out like so. Um, I'm now going to set up a new layer, we'll call it sections, and I'll make this one red so that we're clear about what we're drawing. And then I'm just going to use these, and I'm going to turn on those surfaces uh, that we turned off previously. And now I'm just simply going to run the intersect command um, between the surfaces and the cutting planes. You can also run the section command, and you can run that, well, no, sorry, you cannot run the section command because um, that works in orthogonal directions. So in this case, we'll have to use intersect uh, to do that. And I'll, I'll show you the slow way and the fast way. So I'll type in intersect first, and then the objects I'm going to intersect are first the poly surface, and then you know all of those there. And the result now is the sections being drawn. And if I turn off my cutting planes, you can now see that I've got a series of construction lines that I can use to build in some thickness um, that are at least, in this case, perpendicular to the keel. So those section lines are perpendicular. So if this were a board of material or, a, you know, a, let's say a CNC profile or something like that, or if it had, you know, a little bit of width to it, you can set them up so that they're perpendicular to the keel and develop your notches so that everything is, is nice and tight. Um, and none of that has to be guessed. That can all be derived from the model. Um, another way to, um, just to kind of quickly sh uh, show you another way of doing that, I'm just going to control Z this. Uh, we, we don't have to follow this part necessarily, but I did want to just talk a little bit about selecting. In this case, it's not such a problem to make the selections like we did before, but in some cases, it's hard to select certain thi um, number, uh, a large number of items in a more complex model. So let's run the intersect command. And then when it says objects to intersect, um, I can type in SEL. And in this case, um, SRF. And that's going to select all of my surfaces on screen. The other way I could have done it is um, run the intersect command and then type in S select layer, SEL layer. It's going to ask you which layer you want to select. We can select cutting planes. And then for the, uh, the other objects, I can type in SCL layer and just select my surfaces. So again, this is pretty useful uh, if you have um, a lot of things on screen and you're kind of getting your selections mixed up. And now what we, we're able to do is just draw, draw it that way instead of having to manually select. Okay, so just another little trick as I go here. As a, that's a bit of a tangent, um, but you get the idea. I turn those cutting planes off and head back to where we were before. Uh, there's one more thing to do before we go into the next step here, and um, that we can turn off our surface layer for this, and we we have to make sure that it looks like they are okay. Yeah, actually, that that won't be a problem. 
right? So the, the keel won't be a problem. Let's turn on our cutting planes. What we got to do now, though, is divide these profile curves into new points um, that exist along the exact same plane as our cutting plane. So a simple divide won't do that because we're going to use the because these angles in space aren't going to coincide to a divide command. Um, so what we can do is now run the intersect command once again, and I'm going to select points. Uh, sorry about that. Just uh, turn on my points layer, and I'm going to run intersect, and now I'm going to select the cutting planes and the top profiles. And that's going to result in a series of points um, at the ends of those surfaces. Of course, you could have done this manually just by clicking, you know, drawing the points manually as well. But it's a little bit slower. Uh, and that's crucial now because that's the that's what we've done is establish the first axis for our um, our structural ribs. And I can go in my reference to show you. The next part is to establish the second axis, and we're going to do the same process, but now from the profile from the top profile to find an intersection, which will then allow us to draw our, our sections perpendicular to two different axes in 3D space. Okay, okay so I'm going to head back into my construction layer. And uh, I'm going to make a copy of this before we go much further, turning on all the layers. So let me make a copy so that uh, I can keep a history in case i got to go back, in case I've made any mistakes. Turn that stuff back off, and I'll start working on this one. Um, go to my construction layer, and I'm going to go ahead and type in line once again, perpendicular, and you know the drill here. Uh, we're going to be going off of these points. Uh, to make this a little easier, one thing you probably want to do is turn the sections off so that you don't get the computer confused in terms of what line it wants to be perpendicular to. So turn the sections layer off, and then go about the same process from. And if you're going to work in 3D, one thing you can do is hold the shift. After you've done the, the click from the first point, you can hold shift, and you can do it that way. You can also do this in the top view, which may be a little bit easier. Um, or not. Uh, in this case, I'm going to run this out in the perspective view, and I'm going to go past the center point, because I'm going to need to find that intersection later. Okay, so go ahead and go through that process. Line, perpendicular, click a point, hit F, en uh, enter, and then hold shift to click out. Okay. From first, hold shift, click out. And you can go ahead and do that as I, as I work here. Checking my work as I go. And I'm just going to pause now and finish it off, finish off the rest. And then you can pause here as well, complete the rest of the process, and start up again when you're done. OK. So once you got that done, you should be seeing something like this. And now there's no apparent intersection between, of course, the, uh, the perpendicular lines down below and the ones at top. Um, what we're going to do instead is find the intersections between the top ones. So I'm going to take all the ones I just drew up at the top here and select those and then I'm going to mirror them around from the tip point like this and so I'm finding this um, on my points layer I'm then going to find an intersection between all of those and themselves and basically where they intersect okay so I'm just going to select all those top profiles uh, not profiles, I'm sorry about that. Just the uh, these construction lines. Type in intersect. And um, you'll find an intersection point where they ex uh, intersect in space. Now, of course, down here it's going to be a little trickier because uh, these are directly in line with one another, so that's not necessary. These two should actually intersect. And let's find out. It looks like they do, but actually, um, what we can do in this case, 
And it looks like I have an extra line there. Yeah, what we can do in this case is um, probably just trim that back. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. And be careful a little bit because in some of the other ones, it looks as though they're aligning, um, but actually they're very close. So my intersection point here is actually not coinciding with that line. And that actually does matter. It becomes a lot more apparent up at the front, which is where we'll start to make this a little bit cleaner. All right. I'm going to head into my construction layer now. Um, and I guess for the sake of clarity, uh, I'll change the point color to something else, like, I don't know, gold, just so I can see it a little bit differently. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to play connect the dots. All right, so I'm just going to connect a polyline from, or a single line from the intersect point to the division point on the keel, like this. Um, and in fact, to make this even more clear, I'm going to set up a construction two layer because uh, I'm noticing that this is might be a little hard to read. Uh, I'm going to make that. I'm going to make that. Um, what's a good color here? Green, probably. You can see that pretty easily, or maybe even magenta. There we go. There we go. So I'm just going to connect the dots that coincide to one another like this. So that will connect here, this intersection down to, to there, and down the line. Okay. Very good. So now they're going to start getting closer to one another. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and make sure that I'm not snapping on anything incorrectly, making sure I'm snapping to that point. So it's helpful in this point to have the O snap, point O snap on. And in this case, I can just uh, trim this back because these two actually connect. So I can trim this thing back and we can use that as a way to, to just draw out our, our actual structural plane. Okay. Um, before we go on to the next step, I'm going to then make a connection back from that point to here. Okay, and once we're done with that, we want to just trim this back. Um, in fact, we, we, we technically don't need these anymore. So to clean this up a little bit, I can either hide these or just delete them. And um, what I'll do is turn everything on again. Uh, aside from my cutting planes, I don't want to bring those over anymore. But I will bring all this along for the ride. And I'll make a copy to keep the history once again. Turn those surfaces off. Good. Probably uh, we can leave the sections on for now as well. And, uh, and then I'm just going to delete these all over here on this side because uh, they serve their purpose. We found our intersection and we don't need them any longer. Uh, and that's going to make it easier now to just trim back. This is going to be the cutting object. We'll trim all these back. The, the line you just drew we'll use as the cutting object, as you can see here. And I'm just going to trim out those, those uh, construction lines that are heading off from the outer profile. And that'll make sense in the next step. Okay, so there we go. We're all set here. And um, now's a good time to make a new cutting plane layer. So we'll call this cutting plane two. Um, and I'll change the color to just distinguish between the two of them. Turn on the cutting plane layer. Uh, yep. And now what we're gonna do is a set of extrusions from this line in this direction, okay? So I'm gonna change that again to, to a different color. Uh, type in extrude curve. That's the curve I'm extruding. It's the perpendicular direction off of there. 
off of the outer profile. The direction, now once we set that up, it's gonna ask for a direction. And by default, it's gonna go up and down in orthogonal view in the Cartesian coordinate system. So we don't want that, we're trying to draw this in 3D. So we go up to the top of that command, click direction. The base point of that direction is this intersection point we found earlier. The second point is gonna be anywhere along that line I just drew down back to the keel, like this. That's gonna set my direction down. And I'm just gonna click down at the bottom at the point at the keel. You can see now that what I've done is I've drawn a plane, a cutting plane that we can use uh, in a perpendicular direction, both from the keel, and you can see that uh, here, but also from, in this view, from the outer profile. This is going to be useful to set, um, this is I can actually use now um, against my surfaces to draw out structural planes, and I'll get to that in just a second. So before we do that, let's repeat the command, and let's go through it one more time. Hit direction, D, set the direction, like this is going to end a little bit earlier than I want it to so I guess what we need to do is go a little further yeah uh, I found one little error I just didn't go far enough the process is fine I just didn't go far enough so we'll start that again uh, direction here's my direction and then I'm going to go further to an arbitrary distance like that just to make sure it cuts directly through our surface entirely when we get there all right so set that up again direction boom Go past and keep going. One more time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and wrap this up and finish it out. And actually, as I was working, uh, I also wanted to show you, you can do this in, a, in the opposite uh, way. You can also select this point to, or this curve to extrude. The direction could be the other line. And that is probably a bit of a cleaner way of working. Um, because now we have curves or surfaces that we don't have to set to an arbitrary length. We could just simply snap directly to that point. And now that I remember, uh, if I remember it correctly, our reference file uh, does it in that way, as you can see here. And, that, and it's okay either way is fine, so long as they go past and intersect. So I'm just going to um, repeat this process one more time to extrude this one instead, set my direction, and then just go ahead and it off and some of them are still kind of coming out in oblique um, so I guess either way you do have to extend them past uh, I just wanted to show that there's a you know an alternative here and both will work because really all we're doing is drawing cutting planes nothing really too specific all right okay so once you're done with that um, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this one up. So let me just finish this up here. Okay, and here's my completed version. Um, turn on that surface layer again. I'm going to make another copy to start the next step, which is almost there. Um, and now, um, you know, again, uh, Boat-like forms, not necessarily boats, um, but just to give you an idea of the relationship between, in this case, surface, a framework, the surface, developing a new framework to make a structure, and deriving all of that so that it all has a relationship together, kind of creating a, a relationship between all those things. And uh, there's a couple things we can do here. What I'll do is I'll just kind of trim out the excess of these cutting planes, um, in this case, using the surface to do it. So the cutting objects will be the surface. And then I'll just kind of click click ahead and pop all those down. Chop them all down like that. So if for whatever reason you wanted these kind of, if this was going to be the way that you were going to structure this surface in particular, um, that's a good way of doing it because now each one of these planes is perpendicular to the surface at those sections, which means if you've got material thickness here, you can go ahead and drill in and screw in your detail um, or create at least a perpendicular detail and a fastener that runs perpendicular from the surface into your structure. So imagine having some thickness here. You can kind of use a screw to pop that surface directly in without having to come in at a weird angle 
that you'd have to guess. Okay, so you get the idea, I think. Um, forgot one, there we go. So again, the relationship between structure, in this case being derived from surface, uh, is something that I wanted to bring out in this exercise because, okay. um, so that's it for this one. Um, take a screenshot, show us your progress, and refer back to the reference file as necessary. Okay. Uh, and once you're comfortable with this process, you can head on off to part three.